freeze the question over there and then answer that so then you guys can see the question. Right, what do we want to find? That's useful to know so that you know that um, your final solution is meeting the criteria. I want to find work from one to two. And you can see I've, I've adopted some convention, conventions. It doesn't say state one and state two, but it kind of says it was this and then it was this. There's two states. And I want to find the work between those. So now, oh, now it is useful having some visual sense of what this might look like on a chart. So when you come up with a thermodynamic <coughs> process problem, and you can draw this down. I think there's some utility in that. Uh, so it's going to start at some high pressure, and we know what that is. This is KPA, of course. 1290, it's going to end at some low pressure, and it's going to be a polytropic expansion process. Pressure's going down. Polytropic expansion. Up and over, straight line, down and under. Down and under, good. We've done enough of this sort of thing that we've got a sense for it. Good, oh, I feel like it's going to be something like that. One, two, and we want to find the work. And work is area under the curve. Cool. Now we're ready to do some maths. But it's good to know what we were, what we're working for. The governing formula for this, uh, which is the sort of formula that you could expect to find from a formula sheet, is work 1, 2 equals P1, V1 minus P2, V2 divided by n minus 1, noting n equals k equals 1.4. That's because it's isentropic. If it was an other polytropic process, you might be given a polytropic index n. If you were doing something like lab 2, then you'd be determining n. But uh, for this case, we'll get the polytropic index. So what do we know? What don't we know? We know p1. We know p2. I feel like we can determine V1 and V2, but we don't know them yet. Okay? So the next governing formula that's going to help us is PV equals RT. So V1 equals RT1 on P1 equals 0.287 times T1 we said was 553 divided by P1 we said was 1290. Cool. Yes. Good question. How do we write PV equals RT? Right here. You might have been using, let's write it over here in a different colour. You might have been using P V equals M R T. Okay? We can divide both sides by M to get P V on M equals R T. And we know that V on M is specific volume. Lowercase V. Saying P lowercase V is <laughs> R. So you know it's good, it's good. It's fine. Yes, that's a good point, Matt. Thank you. And for a sense of intuition about what specific volume is, specific volume is 1 on rho, which is your density. That's not a P, that's a rho. Right? Um, so it, it, it fits in with the other specific units that we use in this subject, but what you've probably come across before is density. Cool. Good. <coughs> And someone with a calculator has already calculated my V1 value. I calculated it before I came. Is it okay if I write it out? I'll write it out and then you can tell me if you disagree. Point three zero six five meters cubed per kilogram. Now for V2, you say if we're trying to calculate V2 in the same way, we've got P2, but we don't have T2. So if we come back up here, we've got P2 
we've got T1, but we don't have T2. So now you say, well, how do I determine T2? Or do I need to determine T2? Or can I exploit, exploit some other information I have about this expansion process to help me determine lowercase v2? Because that's what we're trying to get. Now we're trying to get, oops, you're not red. Now we're trying to get lowercase v2. Now, the next thing that we can exploit is we know that P1 V1 to the power of, well, let's say N, equals P2 V2 to the power of N. Because it's polytropic, and that's what polytropic means. We can make V2 the subject of this equation and say V2 equals V1 P1 divided by P2 to the power of 1 divided by 1.4. Ah, I've substituted in straight away. N. Equals 0 0.123065 times 1290 on to 10 to the power of 1 divided by... Now I can substitute in number. And for those playing along, 0 point. <coughs> All right. So hopefully this felt reasonable, knowing that it's a polytropic process. And now we've got our V2. Now we've got our P1, our V1, our P2, our V2. That's just a 1 and that's an N. So it feels like we've got everything we need for this equation. And we can just say work 1, 2 equals 1290. 1, 2, 3, 0, 6, 5, minus 2, 10, 10, 10. <coughs> Bye. Uh, yep, good. Cool, that's an equation with numbers in it. So we can answer that. When I tapped that into my quiz, it told me I was right. So that made me feel good. Um, I originally, because I'm dreadful with remembering formulas, because I tend to um, derive them on the fly, as I said, I originally had 1 minus n underneath this, uh, is the, I'm going to call it the denominator of this fraction. Um, and what I ended up with was a negative number. But then, and this is why I'm a bit lazy with formulas, because I feel like I can derive on the fly, then I went back to my chart and said, hang on a minute, the volume's increasing. If the volume's increasing, the work must be positive. And so I knew that I had gotten a negative in my, uh, in my governing formula, and I took that negative out and got the right answer. Uh, you. Yes, you're really offended by that. <laughs> no, uh, what's I the convention be. between uh, expanding gas is a persistent like, are you saying the system's gaining work or something else is gaining work? Yes, it's good. So the work is positive, right? So work what? is positive. Is the system gaining work? The system is doing work on the surroundings. Okay. And thus there's positive work. Okay, so I'm going to have that over here. No worries, yep, yep. If the, if the surroundings are doing work on the system, it's negative work. If the system is doing work on the surroundings, it's positive work. <coughs> and, uh, and the reverse is true for heat. Cool. That's the process. Were there any questions about that? It was the most, can we talk about this question? So I assume there was lots of uncertainty about it. Hopefully that was a pretty clear run through. Kavan has a question. No, you guys go. Yeah, go. If it's not known what process is uh, like 
how do you determine what process is being undertaken before you solve the problem? Good. So the question was, how do you determine what the process is? And the process is a reversible adiabatic process, which is isentropic. And in the lecture notes, isentropic is a form of polytropic where the polytropic index is equal to the ratio of specific heats. So that's something you know about isentropic expansion within a gas. So basically, you just go revert to polytropic if it's not uh, one of the other ones that we covered. You really need to think about it. And the next question we're going to do, it doesn't specify the process, and so we need to think about what's going to happen, and that will help us determine what the process is going to be. But yeah, so you'll, so if it's isentropic for a gas, it's polytropic with n equal k. If it's, you know, isobaric, it's isobaric. Yeah. So yes, that's that's a something you need to know, something you need to learn. Yeah, that's true.